Sister Heidi could turn me down just a hair in the monitors. Just a hair. I got some reverb going up here. It's good to see everybody. And uh, man, I'm glad to see you all here. Uh, amen. Thank you for coming. We have several unable to be here tonight due to sickness and and uh, different, just different things that are going on. And uh, so we want to remember them as we pray. Um, uh, Brother Donnie and Sister Sharon are unable to be here. Uh, Brother Cody Pipkin, uh, Brother David and Sister Sharon. Uh, Sister Maria is unable to be here due to a work issue. Um, trying to thank uh, Sister Leanne and Brindley uh, need prayer. Um, who else did I say, honey? Yeah, she said she wasn't listening in case y'all wonder <laughs> what's going on here. But uh, we, we do uh, want to remember um, Sister Barker, Sister Virginia, Brother Doyle, Sister Norma Davis. Um, ask you to pray for our family. Um, Daddy's uh, last living brother passed away. My Uncle Connie passed away, and we have his funeral tomorrow. And uh, um, ask you to pray for everybody that will be traveling to that and uh, have some special requests. Does anybody have a request over here on my right, Brother Blake? All right. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Let's remember Pate for sure. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, remember Lottie, baby. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Yeah. So remember Brother Abernathy that was with us a while back. You remember his wife had COVID in the hospital for like 50 days? Well, his daughter passed away yesterday with COVID. Uh, she just had a baby three weeks ago and passed away. Tiffany was her name, so let's remember her. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Brother Skipper and Sister Terry also need prayer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have several Sister Margaret. Sister Margaret. Mm -hmm. Carly needs prayer too. Anybody else in the middle? Over here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sister Nadine. Right. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. All right. We remember her. We remember her. Darlene. All right. Remember Darlene's son. Uh, up here. Yeah. Uh, Bethany and Carson Holloway are not here today. So okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And, and in case you're wondering, all of these sicknesses aren't COVID. You know, everybody that gets sick ain't got COVID. Okay. So, sometimes they're just regular sick. Okay, <laughs> we don't might automatically assume that's just what it is, uh, but uh, but there is some COVID issues. Uh, we do we want to remember uh, Brother Robert Henry. I talked to him today. He said he feels good enough to go to work, but they won't let him. Uh, but uh, he's he's doing much better. But Wally uh, uh, Trip calls him Uncle Wally. That's Sister Sharon's brother. Uh, he is sick, and uh, there there's several that need prayer. Amen. We want to pray for our country. We want to pray for Israel, the peace of Jerusalem. And we want to pray for our church. Amen. I tell you what, I wouldn't have gave you a half a dollar. As many times as my phone was ringing a while ago, I just wanted to go throw it in the truck and shut it off. But now look at what a good congregation we still have here, man. Isn't God good to us? Brother Terrence, he's good to us. He's good to us. Let's pray. Let's pray right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus. A lot of requests, a lot of sickness, a lot of different situations going on. We, we do know that this old COVID is still rearing up and getting people. Got family members that are struggling and loved ones. And we pray against COVID in the name of Jesus. Ready for it just to thin out and go on somewhere else. Get out of here. Just let it ascend up to the heavens as it were. Get away from us. I pray for everybody that's struggling with various and sundry other ailments and infirmities. I pray for those whose families are sick. 
I pray, God, that uh, that revival is not quenched. I pray, Lord, that our faith stays high. I pray, God, that we continue to look to the heavens from whence cometh our help. I pray, Lord Jesus, that there's power and demonstration of the Spirit in our messages uh, and in our thoughts and our testimonies, uh, that discipleship continues, that evangelism continues. Uh, I pray for our country. I pray for J Jerusalem and the peace, the Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I pray, God, that every request that was mentioned here, that we give you praise because you answer it, because it's doable. There's nothing we've asked that you can't do. I praise you, God, for the hope that we have in you, for the strength that we have in you, for the assuredness that we have that everything's going to be all right. We declare it in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sing a little bit tonight. Worship the Lord. Come on, are you glad he answers? He's faithful. He's faithful.
Do we give God some praise because he rescued us? He rescued us. He saved us. Come on, praise him. Praise him for it. You wouldn't have life without him. You wouldn't have hope without him. You'd still be bound without him. He rescued me. Hallelujah. I owe everything to him. Everything. Because he picked me up. Amen. May you please be seated if you'd like to this evening. Uh, before we take up our offering, I want to give you a couple of announcements. Um, um, let's see. This was These were in the announcements on Sunday, but uh, I'm going to push this coat drive. All right? I want, does anybody not know what about the coat drive we do? Everybody knows? Then we won't have no trouble getting 40 <laughs> new coats since y'all all know. I, I know everybody don't know. What the deal is, is we, yeah, scared, that's right. You're going to think scared when I get done here in a few minutes. I'm just teasing. That's just a joke. Uh, we uh, collect coats for foster children. Uh, and we take them down to the Pemiscott County office, which is a circuit, which includes Pemiscott and New Madrid County. But uh, it, it's a big deal. That the, and they give away every last coat we take. The most we've ever taken is 32. So this year, how many believe we can get 40 yeah. new coats? And, and we've always if, lightly used, and when I say lightly used, that means like brand new just took the tag off. I'm serious. We don't take no trash down there. And here's why. She told me, the lady that I deal with, and I've dealt with her enough to now, now to trust her, she told me that every day she has people bring junk for them kids and they tell her, in the shape they're in, they ought to be appreciative of anything I give them. She said, I hear it every day. Let me tell you something, we don't roll like that. We don't roll like that. And I want to tell you that we buy, because we buy them for, my, for all children age. All right? And you know how far up that goes? 18 years old. All right, and we really like to focus on about 12 to 18 because ain't nobody helping them. They like all the little cutie patooties, and I don't blame them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But when they get to the ornery age, don't nobody want to help them. That's who we're reaching to. Now, we buy anything you can get, and they're not that expensive. You don't have to break the bank, but uh, ain't none of our youngins running around here cold. Can I get an amen? amen. And uh, so anyway, that's what we do. It's, it's a blessing. It, it, isn't it a, it, when we go down there, you wouldn't believe how grateful they are. It's an incredible blessing. So uh, how, how many will at least help us out a little bit? Try, make every effort. Thank you. We're going to shoot for 40 new coats for the foster children. And the deadline is November the 14th. So you have a few days to do it. But uh, that's on a Sunday, and that's the deadline. Next Tuesday night, September the 21st, at 6 o'clock in the Family Center, there will be a housewarming party. I modified this just a little bit, by the way. There will be a housewarming party for Fran and Angel. Now, she told me it's just going to be for Fran, but, but I added Angel in there because he lives there too. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he rules it anyway. So, uh, but anyway, next Tuesday at 6 o'clock in the Family Center, and then once she gets her gifts and things, uh, then everybody's going to carry a van to her house to help her deliver her things and stuff, right? Yeah, so we can see her house. So doesn't that sound like a good thing? Yeah. Amen. So we're excited that everybody be a part of that, and the there's a list in the back of things she needs. So if you would, write your name down or something or let it be known what you're going to get so she doesn't get 373 uh, purple bath towels. <laughs> All right. Um, 
We're going to take up our evening, Wednesday evening, tithe and offerings. And uh, uh, you know how you can give. Uh, Givelify, that's a giving app. Um, the website, www.riverbendpentecostals.com. You can give through PayPal on that. And then, of course, mail it in to Post Office Box 477, New Matter, Missouri, 63869. And then we receive it here in person as well. And uh, the prayer that we pray, uh, it's a declaration of faith. Amen. Amen. Let's declare it. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God, walking walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name, amen. Let me tell you this real quickly as you bring forth your offerings. There's been some more folks, that's what I was thinking that got me all sidetracked. There's been folks still getting blessed. Checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. There's people that don't even go to this church that see it online and believe it. Amen? It's happening. So why don't you come bring your tithe and offerings. As you do, say hi to somebody. Tell them it's good to see them. Uh, uh, as, you, as much as you feel comfortable, smile, 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 smile. This is worship. Come on, let's sing it. To the north we cry out. To the south. To the south we will shout. The enemy and his kingdom must come down.
through Christ. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Like for River Bend kids to come to the front. Go ahead, Anora. There you come. Heaven spelled backwards. I'm going to get it right one of these times, baby. There's Jace and Randy. Ain't that right? Huh? That's right. Okay. Because I know your name. He said, why do you call mine and my brother's name for? My bad, bro. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to take your word for that. Amen. All right, Brother Mac, here's what you're going to do, brother. Oh. Y'all ready? Yeah. Everybody ready? Yes. All right, Mac, show them how it's done. Marshall Dillon. All right, uh, River Bend Ignited, that's our students, age 12 to 18. You can be dismissed. Amen. Doesn't it look good, all the kids and students? Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Last, uh, last week I asked you a question. I'm not going. I mean, this this lesson ties together. But does anybody remember a question I asked? What did I ask you last week? Does anybody remember? Anybody? Who are you? What, what was it? Who are you discipling? Thank you. Who are you discipling? Did everybody forget I asked that or y'all remember now? Y'all remember now? Uh-huh. Uh, if you're not, guess what? We need to be. I got two possibilities. Matter of fact, I got two I'm already working on. I got two. One of them's been probably, probably watching tonight, but he's been promising me he was coming to church far back as I can remember. But he's scared I'll call him out. So I tried to tell him I don't do that too much. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, that's, that's not you two, but you are two more. Yeah. Yeah, I meet with uh, Miss Jane and Ronnie every Tuesday morning, and that's discipleship. They're discipling me, too. And, uh, but, uh, uh, hallelujah. God's doing good things. But not as good as he wants to do. Because the best things he wants to do is through you and I. Amen? Amen? And how much opportunity is he getting to do that? Nobody can answer that question but you and I. Here's what we're going to do. A little bit different tonight. I used Sister Amanda as a guinea pig this afternoon. And I had her try this out. Because if, if it didn't work, then I was going to have to do something else. But uh, anyway... A few weeks ago, the Lord gave me this passage and then told me to put it on the shelf. And then today's the day he said, get it back out. Now, I'm going to read Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. And then here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a, just a couple minutes. It doesn't take long. And I want you to answer. How many questions do I have there for you? I want you to answer questions 1, 2, and 3 based upon what we read here. And, uh, and then I'm going to teach the Bible study, and then I want you to answer question four. Um, there are some powerful, powerful, revelatory truths in this passage. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ did not mutter any 
any idle words. Everything he said had something to, something meaning to it and purpose. So I want to read Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. I'd like for you to read along silent will you with me, but I want you to soak it up and make sure you get the picture. Okay? For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning. Householder it means he's the boss. He owns the land. He owns the vineyard. He is the man with the plan. It's likened to a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, now before you get yourself all worked up, that is not the penny that you have in your pocket or used to have or you got in a jug down at the foot of your bed. All right? That is a denarius, which is a Roman uh, denomination of money, and it was a good, solid daily wage. All right? It was not pauper money. Good wage. So he agrees with the laborers for a penny a day, and he sent them into his vineyard. And he went up out about the third hour, which is 9 o'clock in the morning, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, that's 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, In case you were wondering, eleventh hour is five o'clock, six o'clock is quitting time. So when even was come, that's six o'clock, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first, paycheck time. And when they came, and when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the goodman of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I did thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thine eye evil or jealous because I am good? So the last shall be first and the first shall be last for many be called but few chosen. Now I'd like for you to just take a minute, just a minute or two, and I'd like for you to answer those questions. I'm not taking this up. This is for your benefit. But please do not answer them church style. Y'all know what I mean by that? Don't answer them like you think that's what the preacher wants. Because everybody knows how to be the goody-goody suck-up in school and say what you think the teacher wants you to say when it ain't the truth. All right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? So answer these like you really feel when you read this passage. Just take a couple minutes, if you would. And then we'll, we'll get into the teaching. How do I feel about this parable? How do I want to feel about it? And what does it say about me, how I feel about this parable and how I want to feel about this parable? What does it reveal about me? Remember, you're keeping this. Ain't nobody grading it. 
I'm not, I'm not coming by to check what you wrote down. Just take a couple of minutes here. And I, I don't want you to take too long because I don't want you to think your way into holiness. <laughs> I want you to be honest. And some of you may be honestly right, but most of us don't like it. Starting with number one, me. I know how I felt when I read it the first time. How do I feel about this parable? How do I want to feel about it? And what does that say about me? And then we'll get into the word. We've been about two minutes in. We'll do about two more, and then we'll get into the word. I think this is really going to help us tonight. Some powerful truth in here. Um, we're setting the stage to begin to teach sanctification and holiness. But it, every time I start to teach it, the Lord says it ain't time yet. Because there's some foundation that has to be laid first. And uh, so... We probably should have prayed for the landing people over at Van Buren. That's going to hurt that community. You might remember to pray for them that the landing at Van Buren burnt to the ground last night. And when I say burnt to the ground, y'all see some pictures? My goodness, there's nothing left there. And it's really going to hurt Van Buren. We need to, we need to pray about that. That's, that, we need, that they can rebuild and get back going. All right, about 30 more seconds, and we're going to get into the Word. All this is about to make you think, get us to thinking, get us connected to the Word. You're going to take these with you, because if you leave them here, I'm going to read them. <laughs> Probably won't be no handouts left on the seat tonight. Yeah, I really won't know who it is, but I know some of you are writing. All right, let's get into the word of the Lord. For the kingdom of heaven, verse number one, is likened to a man that, has a, that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. He's a farmer. He raises grapes, and that is a... Um, uh, very common, a lot, lot of farmers, it's kind of like soybeans or cotton in southeast Missouri. Uh, you, you either mostly had olive uh, orchards or vineyards, and uh, that's kind of what you did. But he went out early in the morning, and they started their work day at 6 o'clock. Really, if any time you read the first hour of the day in Jewish terminology at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then the third hour of the day is 9 o'clock in the morning. And then the sixth hour of the day is noon and so on and so forth in three-hour increments. So he went out early in the morning at 6 o'clock in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Are anybody familiar with the term day laborer? Day laborers were, were men would go stand in a certain area and guys would come by and hire them. It's just for the day. It's not for the long haul. It's just for the day. But it was a common thing in this day. And he went to hire laborers into his vineyard. And it's important that ownership and authority has to be established. All right? The householder owns the vineyard. He has some employees, but he needs some extra help, Brother Terrence. So he goes to the marketplace and he hires some day laborers into his vineyard. And then they made an agreement. They 
decided what they were going to get paid for working. And Sister Sheila, they had the opportunity to say, not interested. So they entered into an agreement with the, labor, the landowner. The laborers agreed to a salary of a penny a day, the Roman denarius, which I told you earlier, and I will reiterate, it's a good solid day's wages. And he sent them into his vineyard. He owns it. He's paying the bills. He's hiring the help. So now we've established the order and their field of labor has been established. He sent them to his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour after this group's been working for three hours. He goes about nine o'clock and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. They didn't haggle about the fee. There is no salary established. He just says, I'll be fair to you. Now, they've already been struggling for three hours without a job. Okay? So, the third hour he saw them. And they went their way. And he went out about the sixth hour. That's noontime. And about three o'clock in the afternoon, and he did likewise. So he sees some more guys there. And he says, hey, you all come and go to work with me. And whatever is right, I'll pay you. And then about the 11th hour, one hour before quitting time, five o'clock in the evening, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, why stand ye here all day idle? Now here's a question we got to ask ourselves. How does he know they've been there all day? He's been there all day. He's been in and out all day. And he's kept coming back looking for workers. And so they said unto him, because no man has hired us. By being there, they're saying what? I want to work. But they've been there all day and nobody's hired them. Now labor is at a premium in the vineyards in the time of the vintage. That's the time they're getting ready to start turning the, picking the grapes and turning them into wine. And labor is at a premium. But this is a crew that's been standing there all day and nobody has hired them. What does it say that nobody has hired them? It's kind of like getting laid off in the middle of a hiring spell. That ain't a good sign. What does it say that no man hired them when it was commonly known that labor was at a premium during the time of the harvest? Likewise, what does it say that they are still standing there? Not only do they want to work, but they're holding out hope that somebody is coming along that says... I need you. They are not there at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, which is 11 hours since the workday started, and they've been standing there all day, but they haven't given up hope that somebody's going to come along and say, I need you. Can we say that? I need you. That's the way the process works is you have a vineyard and you need the grapes picked and so you don't have enough help like you are. So you go to the marketplace and you find some extra help for this job right now. I want to get that established all the way down in your gizzard. The man was not in the marketplace looking to give away some money. This was not a soup kitchen or a food line. I got no problem with them. 
But when you went there, Brother Jay, you went there because you needed help. I don't know whether to say this right now or not, so I'm going to go ahead and say it, and then I might say it again later. What in the world this fella has done a 6 o'clock hiring, a 9 o'clock hiring, a noontime hiring, a 3 o'clock hiring, and the next natural progression would be quitting time, Brother Blake, but something brought him back to the marketplace at 5 o'clock in the evening. Do you know what that says? Everybody I've got there are doing a good job, but not good enough. I'm here because I need somebody to get us over the hump. I'm here because I need somebody to bring us down the home stretch. I'm here because there's some men and women that have worked really hard and they've took to the limit. And I need somebody to be a shot in the arm to them in the last day. One hour left, and they're still standing there. And they're not standing. They don't say because we're poor. They don't say because we're broke. They say we're only here because nobody said they needed us. Ladies and gentlemen, I preach this, and I'm going to preach it again. The, the mentality of evangelism in the one God apostolic church has changed. We can no longer go out and tell the world, you need to come to our church because we're the best. But we go out and tell the world, you need to come be a part of us because we need you. Yeah. Brother Blake, we need the 11 o'clock worker. So he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, my vineyard, my money, my house, I'm the boss. Go ye into the vineyard, and whatever is right, well, I hope I can wait to get to the good, hope I can get there before time runs out on me. I don't know what time it is running out on me. I watched a message by Brother Arnold this morning, and he said, I'm going to hurry, but I don't know why. I'm retired. I ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> he said, you go to the vineyard too. We're talking about the 11 o'clock crew. He said, you go to the vineyard, and I'll give you whatever's right. And they go. So when the even was come, that's six o'clock. These fellas worked for, yes, one hour. Probably not even quite a full hour, Brother Terrence. So when the even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, call the laborers. Everybody say laborers. laborers. It's not a, a coincidence that more than one time Jesus refers to people as laborers. That's because it's a job living for God. I used to work construction with my daddy. This makes sense. If, it, if this sounds sexist to you, please forgive me. I'm not meaning it to be. It's just on a construction job. You ever worked on them before? Okay. I was scared to death, Brother Jerry, and here's why. Every mistake I made, I was the youngest whippersnapper on that job. Can you guess what happened every time I made a mistake? Oh, they rolled me, man. They put a saddle on me, and they rolled me, and they wouldn't forget about it. You know when they forgot about it? When I messed up again. So I was scared to do anything. So I would take my hammer out, and we were doing concrete forms, and I'd take my hammer out, and I'd try to, and then measure it, and then and my daddy come along, and he grabbed that hammer out of my hand. He said, give me that hammer, boy. He said, we ain't building pianos here. I said, but I don't want to mess it up. It's, it's hard to do. He said, if it was easy, your mama would be out here doing it. <laughs> well, that just made me feel real good. And he'd take his hammer, and he'd pow, hit that thing, and he'd jump right in there like 
almost like him and God was working together to embarrass me too. The laborers, the workers, we have a job to do. You hearing me? That's getting into our spirit. We've got a job to do. He puts everybody in the body as it pleases him. And when you find your place, you fit right in. Because that's what he brought you to the kingdom for. Hear me now. The Lord doesn't bring anybody to the kingdom and say, reckon where I can fit them in. He knows where the next piece is that ain't here yet. And he knows where it goes. And it's going to make it work. Because surprise, 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 we ain't good enough yet. He said, call the laborers in and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. So pay the first guys. Pay the 11 o'clock crew first, 11th hour crew first, 5 o'clock. Pay them first. And when they were hired in the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. Good solid day's wage. But when they got down to the first one, they supposed that they should have received more. Now where did this supposition come from? It came from a carnal man's ideology. Just makes sense. I'm telling you, I, that's how I saw it. Think I wouldn't be aggravated? Just human nature, Brother Jerry, you're right. But Jesus Christ is trying to... There's plenty of human nature to go around. Jesus is trying to bring some heaven nature into it. So Holy Ghost nature into it. And that's what he's teaching. He's not teaching just about how things are, but how things are going to be when you're born again of the water and the spirit. Now what we've got to do is we've got to realize when God fills us with the Holy Ghost, we cannot look at things the same way we did before we got the Holy Ghost. We're not looking through carnal eyeballs anymore, but spiritual ones. Now, they supposed that they were going to get paid more. Didn't say how much more, just more. But they likewise received every man a penny, a good solid day's wage. And when they received it, yep, you guessed it, probably going to meddle just a little bit right now. And when they received it, they murmured against the good men of the house. Y'all have all seen that before. Old grumbling. Notwithstanding, Brother Terrence, that if he hadn't hired nobody else, they'd have been thrilled to death to get it. The rules never changed, only in their mind. And when they received it, they murmured against the good men of the house. Now understand it, they haven't gotten better. They haven't gotten more deserving. They simply lived up to their agreement. They did what he asked them to do for a day's wage. And when they came in to the paycheck line, he wrote them a check for what he agreed to. They fulfilled their responsibility. But somewhere between standing in the marketplace hoping for a job, because that's where they started too. Isn't it amazing they all started in the same place? Wanting the same thing? All of them, you know why they're there? They don't have a regular job. They're relying upon the mercy of the landowner. But now when some newbies have been introduced to the equation, everything's changed in their mind. Ain't nothing changed in them. The Bible doesn't say they worked harder. Matter of fact, the Bible doesn't say that anybody didn't work hard. 
We have to assume because everybody got paid, they were all hard workers. Nothing's changed. But when things didn't line up with the way they thought they ought to line up, they got mad and started bumping their gums at the good men of the house. I'm about to preach for just a few minutes. Are y'all all right with that on a Wednesday night? They started somewhere along the line. They, I ain't preaching yet, it's the next part. They changed the measurements. Because when they were in the marketplace, they all measured the same. But now because I've been here longer, I'm worth more. That's the way the carnal mind works. Guess what? Not the Lord. I want you to see something here in verse 12. I'm going to preach a minute. It won't be long. Just a minute. And this is what they're saying when they grumble. You know something, Brother Blake? One of these days you're going to be, you're going to be probably in my position or something similar. I hope all of y'all are moving past me. That's the plan. Okay? All, all five of you guys are going to be better than me. That's the plan. I know that's hard to believe, but that's the plan. <laughs> I, couldn't re- I couldn't resist that. <laughs> Woo-wee. Oh, my goodness. You're going to find out when you're leading people very rarely, very rarely, it's an extreme instance when people grumble against God. Generally, when things go off in their life, they find somebody else to grumble at. Okay? So they go to grumbling against the leader, the boss man, the good men of the house. And they said, these, y'all know who they're talking about, them, do you realize, Brother Jerry, we're talking about 12 hours ago, they're all in the same boat, hoping for the same thing. They're in the same line. Now all of a sudden, them, those, they, these last have only worked for one hour. Are you ready? But thou hast made them equal to us. What an arrogant supposition. Is your, hear me right now, is your value determined by what you receive or what you give? They determined everybody's value by what they received, not by what they gave. The good men of the house determined a person's value by what they gave, not by what they received. Aren't you glad that the value of the kingdom of God is not established by people? but it's established by God. And you will hear me as I tell you this, there are men and women that you'll never see on this platform, that you'll never see on the front of a bulletin or their name on a sign somewhere, but they're going to be first in line at the kingdom of God and receive the highest value because we're not laying up treasures here on earth, but we're laying up treasures in heaven. And there's a deliverance. Hear me right now. There is a deliverance that's coming to this church and to this movement and to the apostolic people when we're going to be delivered from it's all about me. What I did, who I am, what I gave. There ain't nary one of us whose given has lined up with what we've received. Do 
Do you understand that they made a determination of value based upon what their paycheck was? Wasn't a matter that they worked longer. They'd have been all right with working longer. Nobody would have been upset with that, but they just was worth more than the other guy. But the truth is they weren't. They got what they were worth. Just a second. But the goodman of the house placed a higher value on the ones that hadn't even been worth bringing to the job site till the last minute. Yes, ma'am. They'd have never known it. Why do you think the parable says they did know it? He did it on purpose. Okay, because he needed to teach a lesson. You know what the lesson is? You better get ready. All we've been getting so far is the three o'clock crew. Because there's some in here, y'all thought I was talking to y'all about the 11 o'clock crew. Uh-uh. There's an 11 o'clock crew still out there standing in the marketplace. Oh, hear me right now. And you know what? The Lord, when he goes, when he goes to get them, he ain't going to get them because he feels sorry for them. And he ain't going to get them because we got some empty seats that need to be filled up. He's going to get them because he needs them. Oh, let me tell you something. It was the little donkey that the Lord said, I'm going to ride in the, in the Hosanna Sunday that he took the, told the disciples, he said, go get the donkey. And if anybody says anything to you about it, you just tell them, what? The master hath need of him, and then everything's going to be all right. You better lift up your head, honey. You better get your mind straightened up and realize it ain't never been about you, but it's always been about them, and they're waiting, and they're ready, and they ain't here because nobody's asked them yet. Now you want to know why I said, who are you discipling? Because there's an essential worker in the marketplace. It's not here because nobody's asking. And one of the reasons why that we are hesitant to ask people is because we got a baptism of territorialism that's a stench in the nostril of God. And I can't get them here because they might take my place. That's impossible. Why is he in the marketplace at 11 o'clock? Because all the crew he's done brought in aren't satisfying the landowner. They're not satisfying the householder. Now, there ought to be conviction sweeping into this house right now that says, I'm going to tell you what, we're going to go get them, but it ain't going to be because I ain't getting my part done. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. That's right. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. I hear you what you're saying, but we need to be delivered from all of it. Yeah, we need to be delivered from all of it. And here's the thing. And the Lord's bringing this. The Lord's bringing this. We need to have compassion on the knucklehead. 
That's where we're going is when we have compassion on the one that thinks they've arrived. And we say, come go with us to the marketplace. Because they're there and you notice them. Remember I've told you all before, if you want to find fault, you don't have to look far. Because it's there. There are people that just along for the ride. All right? But you know what message like this is trying to do, Brother Blake? Wake us up and say, we need us all. We need, we need us all. We need us all. Come go with us. Come go with us. Yes, it's frustrating, but we're about to be delivered because that's what Jesus was trying to do here is he's trying to deliver us into a kingdom mentality where he's the king. Okay? And the kingdom mentality, you know what a kingdom mentality does? Sister Heidi said it. The kingdom mentality does. It says, boy, I'm going to wait. I'm going to watch what he gives them because they stood there all cotton picking day long and they didn't get nothing. And whatever he gives them, as soon as that paycheck hits their palm, you know what I'm going to do? Good for you. God bless you. Thank God that you got blessed because that's what the kingdom is. Because you know what the 11th hour worker is doing, Brother Jerry? Making me look good. Because I'm part of the kingdom. I'm part of the body. Are y'all feeling me right now? Are y'all feeling me right now? Huh? Come on now. It's where we no longer judge ourselves by one another, but we celebrate one another. Whatever God's done. You're right. You're right. And that's true to an extent. But when Sister Stacy, whoever she takes, comes to the church... She better keep her eye on them. And, 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 and she better celebrate with them every step they make in the right direction. And love on them when they take a step back. And remind them you didn't come to the kingdom to be a hanger on or you didn't come to the kingdom to be a part of the tares or a part of the failure. You came to the kingdom and God put me in your life because we need you. We need you. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right? You do. You do. But you've repented of your sins. You've been baptized in Jesus' name. And you've received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. There's a whole lot of learning you still got to do. But that, you're sold out. You know what you can do? You tell somebody how to repent. You tell somebody how to be baptized and how to be filled with the Holy Ghost and what happens when they do. Uh huh. Yep. Got up and followed him. Yep. Right. Right. Well, Jesus is teaching this lesson to Peter and the disciples who in Matthew 19, they just asked the Lord, Now we gave up everything for you. What's in it for us? And the Lord's telling them, don't be surprised if it ain't what you think it is. And don't be surprised if somebody that comes along after you don't get blessed in your eyes more than you do. But Sister Stacy, just like you said, when we get this shift in our thinking, that's impossible. It's impossible for them to be blessed more than me because they're part of me. Oh, we're a part of, no, 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 you got to understand me. We're a part of the body of Christ. We're pulling in the same direction. We're doing the same thing. We're on the same team. Yes. We all got blessed. Just like God intended, like a body's supposed to work. Come on now. Yes, ma'am. Then we got one over here. 
That's what I'm talking about. That's right. And not only that, he, he determines my value. He determines my value. It's not determined by the people that have been here a minute. But you know what? We're being changed to Jesus thinking, not stinking thinking. Do y'all feel a shift? Y'all feel a shift taking place? The workers out in the field that have been there all day, they did a good job. They did a good job. And they got what they agreed for. Things didn't change when new people showed up. Their relationship was always with the landowner. Their agreement, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Their agreement was always with the Lord. I didn't get in this to try to beat you out or try to beat nobody else out or try to be something better than somebody else. I got in this because I want to go to heaven and I want to be pleasing to the Lord. And I heard, I heard a voice from heaven that said, I need you. What do you think would happen to evangelism if everybody you went to, you didn't kind of apologize? I know the Pentecost church believes this and this and this, and, and, but if you just hold on, it'll be all right. Instead, you go around and say, I need you. I need you. I need you. You know the Lord needs you. There's a work that God has for you to do. Come on. The Holy Ghost, there ain't none of us ever changed nobody anyway. The Holy Ghost is what changes people. We get them filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Brother Terrence. They'll say, you know what? I don't know a whole lot. But I know if you get Jesus inside of you, he'll make you stop cussing. He'll make you stop lying. He'll make you stop running the bars. He'll make you stop feuding at home all the time. Come on, somebody. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? When you get Jesus down inside of you, everything starts changing, and the closer you get to him, the more the world falls off of you. Yes, you had, a, you had your hand up, or were you just saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus? Beautiful, all of that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. talking about that's what I'm talking about that's what I'm talking about and it's took a, a lot of Holy Ghost and a lot of revelation and a lot of teaching for us to learn we need you Yeah. 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 Don't ever say y'all and us again. You can this time, but don't ever say it again. Y'all and yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. It's, but that's beautiful because that's how God intended for it to be. Because we need you here. All right. It's not about feeling sorry. He went to get. Think about that just a minute. Five o'clock doesn't appear to be hiring time. But you know why he's hiring some more? Need them. Need them. Is that sunk into us yet? It's got to sink into us. 
He got the 11th hour because he needed them. But there was a group already there that turned on them. That's where we're at right now. That can't happen. That can't happen. God have mercy on us if, if all that's up here during worship time is 11 o'clock people and 3 o'clock people. There better be some 6 o'clock people up here too. Let me tell you something else. If there's somebody here that needs the Holy Ghost, I don't care where you got to go. It ain't as important as them being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, it, it said breathe. <laughs> Look at here. Their argument is true. It makes you feel bad if you got the carnal mind. But in the kingdom of heaven, there must be an appreciation for what God has done for somebody else. In the morning, we're all in the same place, but our efforts have not elevated us. Your works can't save you, but you are saved unto good works. The only reason why we can do what we've done is because God's been good to us. The only reason why we've arrived to where we are is because God's been good to us. Because he came by the marketplace and said, I need you. I need you. Come go to work for me. Come go to work for me. Come go to work for me. There is nobody here that the Lord went around and drafted you because you was on somebody else's team. He got you because he wanted you on his team. And he even went and got the 11 o'clock ones who'd been standing there all day long and nobody hired them. You want to know why? You want to know why? They didn't look like they was worth being hired. But in the 11 o'clock hour, they were still there. They were still holding out for hope that somebody was going to come along and say, I need you. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Verse 15. He said, Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? You think what we feel in here every service belongs to us? You think it's because we're good? You know why we feel what we do? Because there have been some people in the field that have obeyed the Lord and they've been doing a good work and they've got it ready for the next crew to come help us, make us better. Hey, we're not throwing rocks at the 6 o'clock crew. Without the 6 o'clock crew, 11 o'clock crew doesn't show up. The only reason he called the 11 o'clock crew out is because there was hope in the last hour that they would overcome. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know if this is in my notes to come because I'm about to quit. He said, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thy eye evil? Now that means, have you gotten jealous because I'm good? Here's the crux of the matter. Have I done you wrong because I did them good? Look at it in a vacuum. Are you ready? Look at it in a vacuum. You know what I'm thinking right now? After I've done preached this and prayed through this and thought about this, what a boss. Oh, what a boss. Oh, my goodness. Do you believe how good the guy is we work for? <laughs> look what he did to them. <laughs> They just worked in our look at that. What a guy we've got to work for. Oh, my goodness. Aren't you glad you work for him? Aren't you glad you're on his team? Aren't you glad that he'd come along and said, I need you? Huh? That really, that's kingdom mentality. Instead of, blah, 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 blah. you ain't missed out on nothing. 
You've not missed out on nothing. Look here. Tomorrow, we'll be back in the marketplace. And I want him to pick me. So what does that say about me if it made me angry and upset? I didn't understand it. I want to I wanna get it like the Lord wants me to have it. But my carnal mind, man, that just, man, that ain't fair. That's just not fair. So now we ask ourselves, what do I see now? Here's what I see. The Lord will hire anyone and everyone, and he'll do it at the right time. And there's going to be some last hour hires of great significance and great value to the kingdom. There are going to be some, oh, are you ready? This, I know this is going to hurt our feelings a little bit, but there's going to be some people that come in the 11th hour that he considers just as valuable as those that came in the 6th hour. That's what I'm talking about. Look at here. Let me tell you this, and I'm going to get out of here. Even those who at first glance weren't worth hiring because they stood there through the 6 o'clock hour, through the 9 o'clock hour, through the 12 o'clock hour, and through the 3 o'clock hour. Nobody hired them. But in the 5 o'clock hour, the master had need of them. Here we go again, Brother Ronnie. That reminds me of a man I taught you about named Onesimus who was worthless. He was worthless until he got thrown in jail and met a Pentecostal preacher named Paul. And when he showed back up at Philemon's house, Paul said, this one who was worth nothing is now worth something. You did see that the 11 o'clock people earned their money. They didn't shortchange. They didn't live up to what they looked like. They did what the master needed them to do. There is significant work to do in the last hour. Those hired earlier were not up to the task by themselves. That is why he kept going back looking for more. And that's the attitude that we got to have. We can only achieve all God has for us by reaching for all. We aren't as good without you as we will be with you. And we've struggled all day. And it's been tough. And it's been hot. And we went under the burden. And now, in the home stretch, in the 11 o'clock hour, we're about to get a shot in the arm from a fresh workforce that are excited about the opportunity and that nobody's ever invited them. But they're here now, and God's going to use them to make us better. Stand with me. I want you to take your paper with you. And I want you to think about the revelation of the 11th hour blessing. He may be in the marketplace with beer on his breath. He may be in the marketplace with a bag of weed in his pocket. He may be in the marketplace wearing the only things he's got on his body. He may be in the marketplace having lost everything he ever had. 
He may be in the marketplace having his name in registers that you don't want to talk about. But he's a long way from being disqualified for the 11th hour blessing. We used to sing a song in the choir. We might need to bust it out back again. The choir and the song. It says, everywhere I go, Lord, everyone I meet. Everywhere I go, Lord, everyone I meet. I want to hold my light up high for all the world to see. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. You know, the book says a city set on a hill cannot be hid. And he said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men. Get it? You ready for it? That they may see your good works. Look at here. Come to the field with us. We're doing a good job, but not near as good as we're going to be when you get with us. That's the mentality we got to have. Do you feel it coming to us? Yeah. Then we got to start eyeballing everybody we meet. Not as what I can do for them, but what can they do for us? What can they do for the kingdom? Where do you fit? Come on now. Come on now. We're talking about a Savior. We're talking about a Savior that offered an unprecedented revelation on the road to Damascus to a murderer. And you know why he wanted him? Because he needed him. He needed him. It wasn't because addition by subtraction that he wanted to stop him working for the enemy. No, he wanted to bring what he had done for the enemy to the kingdom. He wanted him working just as hard for him as he had out there. Are you ready? Are you ready for the revival that God has for us? Let me tell you something. It ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to smell right. It ain't going to make you popular at the club. But it's laying up treasures in heaven. And it's aligning with the will of God. Because you trust me right now, you ain't going to witness to nobody that the Lord is going to say, let me see if I can find them over here somewhere. You know what? You're going to be walking in the perfect will of God. And when you open your mouth, the Holy Ghost is going to be right there to fill it with the truth that you need to tell them that we love you, we need you, and Jesus wants you. Trust me. Dear Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this revelation. I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm thankful, God, that you're revealing to us. And, and as it was testified tonight, we're getting there. That everybody who comes into this room is here because you brought them here. They're here by divine appointment. And they belong in the body. I pray, Lord, that you'll give us faith, faith that is unwavering. I don't care how many yo-yos they do in here, how many times they come in and go out and come in and go out and come in and go out. When they come in to stay, we're going to be ready for them. We're going to have work for them to do. We're going to be what you want us to be, God. Give us faith and wisdom and knowledge and understanding to be what you'd have us to be. And thank you, Lord, that you came to the marketplace and got me. I'm thankful that you came and got me, Lord, and brought me to the kingdom for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, you sure can. Sister Nadine needs prayer tonight. If you would, just stretch your hand up here. She's really hurting in her shoulder and neck, and it just needs to go away. Let me tell you something. I laid hands on somebody. Uh, when was that, honey? Monday. They called me. Don't get scared. They got tested positive for COVID. They asked me to come pray for them. I laid hands on them. And you know what? I got a text message today that said, when GL laid hands on me, I felt that virus leave my body. And he's almost completely well today. Not having any trouble at all. I believe we're going, hey, I prayed for Mr. Richard the other day. I prayed for Mr. Richard, and he showed back up at the Mission, Missouri, and said, who prayed for me? Because whoever prayed for me cured me. That's what he said. We know that ain't true. It's the Lord. But it's our faith in him. Amen? I believe we pray for Sister Nadine right now, and that hurting will go away. You believe that with me? Let's pray it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
I pray, God, against that pain. I curse it and command it to leave her body. You've healed her many a time. You're going to do it one more time. How about 11th hour blessing for Sister Nadine? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the authority and the power that that name carries, I command that pain to leave her body right now. In the name of Jesus, let it be done according to your word and your work. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. How many of you know God is good? All the time. And all the time, God is good. Sunday morning at 10, we're going to have elements. If you ain't been coming to elements, let me tell you what. We need you there. We need you there. It's a good time. Don't we have a great time in elements? Yes. Amen. The great move of God. We're going to have a good time at 11 o'clock this Sunday. And uh, Brother Michael Burke is going to be with us next Sunday in our 11 o'clock service, and you don't want to miss it. Amen. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's pray for Brother Kevin right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Kevin. I pray, God, you'll encourage him. I pray you'll lift his hand. I pray you'll let him know he's needed in the kingdom of God. Let him know how important he is to the kingdom. Let him fight through whatever struggles he's having right now, any sickness in his body. We command it to go according to the blood and the stripes of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, let it be. Amen. Don't forget to look at Sister Fran's wish list. Christmas in September. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Yep. Yep. She laid in the hospital bed and heard them talk about her that she was done for. They didn't want to do anything more for her. She was done. Told her she'd have to have a lung transplant. She told her a whole bunch of things. And God's raised her up now. Isn't that wonderful? She's going to be completely healed. We can give God some praise for it. Amen. See you all Sunday.